A while back I uploaded a video, it was called Remote Control Activated Appliances. I will put the link in the video description area. Now that particular circuit worked well, but it did have some issues. It required a 5 volt power supply to drive the circuit, so you had to have that in addition to the circuit that was being used. It also had some sensitivity issues with compact fluorescent lights, and the range was not very far. So what I did is I came up with the circuit that you see here. I took this Brinks timer housing, hollowed it out, and I used it to make my own remote control activated switch. Now this will trigger using any remote control. And the way I designed it is that I do not want the circuit to trigger unless the button is held down on the remote control for a few seconds. Now the reason why I designed it that way is to eliminate false triggering. Now if this was placed on a wall close to a entertainment center or your television, you don't want to be changing channels and having this clicking on and off every time you change a channel. So that's why the delay is built into this circuit. You have to push and hold for anywhere from three to eight seconds to turn this on and off. At the very bottom is the infrared receiving module that can be slid out easily like that on the side is a power indicator at night when the unit is turned off when there's no power being delivered to this receptacle the red LED is illuminated this way it's easy to locate the zap switch so you can aim your remote and turn it on in the dark the range of this I've tested 75 feet with no problem and of course the range varies depending on the remote control that's used. Certain buttons on your remote control may trigger the circuit quicker or longer. So you have to play around with your remote to get a feel for which buttons trigger the circuit faster or slower. Once the module is slid out, if you have a location where your receptacle is hidden and you won't be able to get at least some reflected infrared light from your remote control, shining on the infrared module. What I did is I added this little remote sensor cable. How the remote sensor cable works, once you slide out the infrared sensor, you take this right here, line the three pins up, and push it in, and it's locked. Once that's in position, this is only five volts going through this wire. You have all this room here to let the wire out from behind your couch or your entertainment center. This side right here has double stick adhesive, and what you would do is you would plug this back in like you see right there. Once that's in position, you peel off the double stick tape and then you can make this come up from behind your couch sticking up just a little bit or on the outside of your entertainment center. This way the receptacle that's hidden from the zap switch can still be activated by your remote control. The entire circuit operates on 120 volts. Let me just plug this back in the way it was goes in easy. Now this circuit could be modified also for 220 volts if you have one hot line and one neutral. It'll work fine also. You're just going to have to make a change to the circuit. The unit you're looking at right here has been in use for a little over a year now and it has worked flawlessly. I've had no issues with false triggering and this also works pretty well even in a very bright room of sunlight just as long as sunlight is not being directly shined into the sensor. When direct sunlight is directed into the sensor, what it does, it has a desensitizing effect and it will reduce your range. So you could use this in a room with sun or outdoors just as long as it's indirect sunlight. The voltage is operating on 5 volts through a transformerless power supply going into the circuit. What I'm going to do is post in the video description area or the about section the component list for the circuit as well as the full schematic and a link to the PCB layout. This right here is the component list. Everything is labeled F1, C1, BR, R1. Everything corresponds to the schematic. Over here is the schematic. Get a little closer. The circuit is fairly simple. 
The main IC is a 556 integrated circuit. There's also an optocoupler, some transistors, resistors, and capacitors. I'll post this in the video description area. I'll also have the PCB layout posted, which you see right here. I made this on a program called Fritzing. I custom made this to fit inside that housing that you just saw. All the components are marked corresponding to the component list. Make sure that these traces are wide like you see here. I used a trace with calculator so these can handle up to 10 amps. And it's also a good idea to put some flux over these areas and cover them with solder as well for increased current capacity. What I'm going to do now is show you a demonstration of how well the circuit works. Okay, as you can see that white pedestal lamp is plugged into the zap switch. You can see the red indicator is on on the side of the unit indicating the power is not being supplied to the lamp. I'm now going to take my Dell remote, point it at the zap switch, and turn on the lamp. There you go. I had to push the Dell remote about three seconds to activate it. You can see the red LED is off on the zap switch. I'm going to turn it off again, my hand right here, let's push the button. There you go, it's off and the red LED is back on. Now if this particular receptacle here was not in the line of sight where you're going to be sitting where you would potentially trigger the zap switch from, then you would plug in your remote sensor cable and mount the sensor higher up or bring it around a piece of furniture where you're able to trigger it. Okay, I'm now going to demonstrate the range of the zap switch. I have the remote sensor cable installed and it goes over to the sensor which will be pointing out of the garage towards the street and I will now walk towards the street and show you how this can be triggered on and off to turn the palm sander on and off. I'm about 45 feet away I'm zoomed in, but I'm about 45 feet away from the palm sander laying on the floor in the garage. And I'm now going to trigger it with the Apple remote. There we go. All right, now I'm going to turn it off. And it's off. All right, I'm zoomed in and I am roughly 70 feet away from the palm sander on the garage floor. We're now going to try a Samsung remote. They work extremely well. Here we go. On it goes. Push the button again. There it is, off.